And uh, during all the webinar, you will be able to uh, ask questions through the chat box, and uh, this question will be asked to the different speaker uh, at the end of the uh, of the presentation. So do not hesitate to to bring your question uh, as we speak in the in the chat box. Could I also kindly ask you uh, to introduce yourself in the chat box by putting your name, uh, organization, title, and country, as well as your email, so we would be able uh, to share more information with you uh, afterwards. Um, I'm Catherine Chazali. I'm an independent consultant. I have been conducting these uh, case studies. Uh, I'm very very happy to have been part of this of this project which is quite uh, quite challenging dealing with the humanitarian development uh, nexus for nutrition but uh, it's also allow me uh, to meet uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people including many of you i would like really to thank uh, all the people which have been contributing to this uh, uh, to these case studies uh, over the past month uh, so today's webinar uh, will be organized in three parts. First of all, uh, I will invite Anna and, uh, and Steve to introduce the vision of the uh, GNC and uh, Sun Secretariat, Sun, uh, Secretariat uh, vision of the humanitarian development nexus. Then I will present uh, very quickly uh, the main lesson learned from these case studies. A uh, policy brief has been published, so you will have more information through these documents. Uh, and then we will be able to hear first-hand information on the Nexus, how is it working in Afghanistan and Yemen, from Dr. Shams and Mrs. Karima Ala. So, to start with, I would like to invite uh, Steve to introduce what is the vision of the humanitarian uh, development Nexus uh, for the Sun Secretary. There, um, I hope everybody can see me and hear me. Please shout if you can't. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to you all. It's good uh, to see so many representatives from so many countries and so many different stakeholder groups. My name is Stephen Williams and I work for the Sun Movement Secretariat in Geneva. I just wanted to say a few words to frame this study and the Nexus in general within the Sun Movement. So what does the Nexus mean for Sun? As you all know, the Sun Movement was created to help all sectors and stakeholders that directly or indirectly impact nutrition to work better together. The aim was and is to break down the silos that inhibit sectors and stakeholders from effectively aligning their programs for better impact on malnutrition in all its forms. The Sun Movement is celebrating 10 years of relentless efforts to ensure a government-led multi-sector and stakeholder approach to malnutrition. In 10 years, Sun has been relatively successful in setting up in-country multi-stakeholder multi uh, multi coordination processes. Uh, these are typically facilitated by government focal point and supported by civil society networks, donor networks, UN agencies, and the private sector. We often call the resulting system a multi-stakeholder platform, but they often go by different names in different countries. Breaking silos and aligning programs around commonly agreed to objectives is challenging and a process that takes time. And it is maybe for this reason that initial efforts primarily focused around government and development stakeholders. However, full inclusivity is the key to success. And it is, as it is often quoted, to tackle malnutrition, you need all of the services, all of the time for all of the people. So if being holistic and inclusive is key, we will clearly not succeed if we do not ensure that the humanitarian stakeholders and the humanitarian coordination systems are not as integrated into the multi-stakeholder platforms as each country context would allow for. The respect for and inclusion of the humanitarian nutrition partners in the multi-stakeholder platforms is what the nexus is for the Sun Movement. So why now? Well, of course, it's not now. There has been a lot of work done over the past 10 years and dare I say, long before Sun existed. Um, but with the last big effort in 2017, when Purnima Keshyap supported the GNC and Sun movement in advocating for the Nexus, which resulted in two guidance notes for UN resident and humanitarian coordinators on the Nexus for Nutrition. 10 years of work has also resulted in the strengthening and better understanding of the benefits of the multi-stakeholder approach 
And this creates a more conducive environment for the humanitarian development nexus to be strengthened. And finally, there is no escaping the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. This week, OCHA released the Humanitarian Needs Overview for 2021, and the projected surge in COVID-induced needs is staggering. We can only hope to tackle and overcome this if we all work together in an aligned manner, respecting and making the most of our respective knowledge, competencies, and resources. At the global level, the Global Nutrition Cluster and the Sun Movement Secretariat have never been working so closely. And just getting to know the people and being able to pick up the phone to discuss any nutrition related issue is of enormous value. If there is not yet this relationship in your country, we hope that you can use some of these recommendations um, to start the relationship, formally or informally. So what next? Well, I'll wait until the end of this webinar to say a few additional words on that. But the nexus means a lot of different things for a lot of different people. So please listen with an open mind and please prepare any questions you have and put them in the chat box or ask to take the floor during the Q&A session. We do want to hear from you. Thanks a lot. And now I pass the floor to Anna. Uh, thank you, Stephen. And um, first of all, my apologies. For some reason, second day in a row, my camera is not working. My apologies for that. Um, so thank you, Stephen. Um, I completely agree with everything you said. And um, from our side, I just want to give an example to illustrate what Stephen um, is talking about. Um, and for those who don't know me, my name is Anna. I am the Deputy Global Nutrition Cluster Coordinator and we worked very closely with Stephen and with the Sun Movement on this project. So for me, um, as probably for many of you, Nexus was always something that we would talk about, whether I was at the country level or at the global level. And then I kind of had my understanding about Nexus. And I know other people also kind of had understanding. Um, but then I think this understanding was a little bit different among everybody. And um, even in humanitarian sector, but also between humanitarian and development. And it was always very difficult, if not impossible, to say this is what Nexus is and this is what we are going to do. Um, so this was uh, one of the reasons why we actually started talking to the Sun Movement. And we've always invited each other for our meetings, um, but there was no as such very strong collaboration. Um, so we both realized that we need to work closer together and we, we didn't know what and how we should be doing at that point. Um, so what we started, we, we just started talking and we started um, thinking what we can do and how and how we can support countries. Um, and then at some point we develop a plan on how we are going to do it. And then we develop the terms of reference for a consultant to actually come and research what, what currently happens in the field and produce recommendations based on that. Um, so we started fundraising because nobody had money for this work. Um, GNC was lucky to get funding first. So um, officially for donors reporting this is project is under the GNC, but unofficially everything what we do, we do very closely together. Um, so we have selected consultants together. We did all the interviews together, all the shortlisting. Um, we review all the documents together. We have a meeting, consultants usually have meeting together with both of us. Um, we we review all the documents jointly even i don't know a, a little things like design or proofreading we always consult each other be, before uh, making any final decision and for me that's that's actually nexus in practice um sometimes we can talk with steven maybe um once every two weeks, sometimes when needed, we can talk, um, I don't know, send 20 messages on Skype every day and have several calls. Um, so while now we are presenting results of this collaboration and results of the study, and we are trying to show you um, that there is so many ways to, to come together and to actually implement HDN, Personally, for me, HDN is working closer with, uh, with Steven, with my counterparts, and being able to call him when I need it, and uh, going for a meeting and, for example, thinking that he has to be there. So I would say, Steve, why don't you do that? And I think that's very easy to do in the country. So everything starts with just talking together and thinking how you can improve response. Um, and I hope that during this presentation, 
everything will become um, clearer for you. But we are here for you if you need any help. Thank you and over to Katrin. Thank you very much, Anna and Steve, for this uh, introduction. So now I will uh, present to you uh, succinctly uh, the lesson learned from these uh, three case studies which I conducted uh, as part of this project over the over the past month. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, so these case studies were conducted in Niger, Afghanistan, and Myanmar. The main objective of these case studies was really to look at how humanitarian and development actors collaborate around the nexus and in the nutrition uh, sector and in the sectors related to, to nutrition uh, through a multi-sectoral uh, approach. So it's really kind of focused on this collaborative uh, aspect, what makes people uh, uh, willing and working uh, together efficiently. And then also looking at how the nutrition cluster or nutrition uh, sector coordination group and the Sun multi stakeholder platform uh, could support uh, these processes. So it was done mostly through the review of existing information, secondary information, and through key informants uh, uh, interviews. Uh, it was conducted uh, between uh, August and September this year, and uh, only remotely, unfortunately, due to the current pandemic. So, uh, as I was mentioning in the introduction, a policy brief I just been uh, edited and, and finalized is going to be available on the on the website of the of the GNT and the Sun Secretariat, and also it will be shared with. Uh, with you. It is, it is uh, collating the main uh, recommendation from this uh, case study. So just in, uh, in a few words, these are the, the kind of main findings for these uh, case studies in these uh, three countries. Um, on the positive side, uh, there is a very strong and increasing political commitment for nutrition, and nutrition considered as a development issue, not only as a humanitarian issue, and through uh, a multi-sectoral approach. There is also policies, strategies, and coordination mechanism uh, in, in all the countries, which are also quite quite strong. Uh, there is an important collocation of humanitarian and development actors um, in space in some areas and especially in the public health system. They are really kind of working uh, together side by side. Um, and there is also an increasing flexibility from the financing instruments, which is offering also more opportunity for humanitarian and development actors uh, to work together. Um, what is still lacking, however, in development, uh, it's a shared vision of the nexus. Uh, the different informants and actors I met and the different documents I, uh, I review allow me to see that there is still a kind of different understanding of what the humanitarian development nexus is and could be for nutrition, which type of benefits it could bring uh, to, the, to, to addressing malnutrition in all its form, and uh, also different understanding of what could be the area of convergence between humanitarian and development actors. Then definitely there is still a lack of investment in, in nutrition, as well as in disaster preparedness and, and response, which kind of hinder the opportunity uh, for humanitarian and development actors to, to work together due to this, uh, this lack of, uh, of resources. Uh, so there is indeed a commitment uh, policies and strategies in all the country. However, they are still not implemented at scale, partly due to this issue of lack of, uh, of investment. And then also there is still a kind of um, an imbalance between the different uh, organizations, uh, where some organizations are lacking sufficient resources to be able to participate in all this process. They are, are able to secure resources to implement specific activities, but then not sufficiently to be able uh, to make themselves available, to have sufficient human resources to participate in 
additional work which is uh, brought by the process of coordination and working on this particular uh, uh, nexus. So there is five main recommendations coming out of the case study. The first one is uh, deriving directly from what I was uh, presenting, is really to develop a, a common understanding of the humanitarian development nexus among all stakeholders. So everybody is sharing uh, the, same, the same understanding as a kind of uh, basis. Uh, for this collaboration. Uh, so it could be done through conducting uh, additional information and training session on the Nexus for the humanitarian actors. There is already uh, sessions which are organized, uh, but it could be it could be increased and end. Uh, to disseminate the guidance which is already existing and that Steve and Anna were mentioning and fostering the exchange of, uh, of experience amongst the actors, such as the session today where we ask um, uh, direct uh, uh, feedback from, uh, from practitioners uh, in, in their country. And also what is really important is to reach out to the subnational level. There is definitely um, less awareness on the nexus and its benefits. Uh, in the subnational uh, level than at the, at the national or global level. So the second thing is to be able to, to define very specific objectives and priorities to build uh, this, this collaboration between humanitarian and development actors. So really to translate very concretely what the nexus could be uh, to be able to really start uh, this co collaboration. So to translate it into very concrete terms uh, in terms of identifying shared objectives and priorities. Not to try to do everything, but to start uh, by, by, uh, by some specific uh, uh, activity. Often what came out of the interviews with the informant is where to start. So it's important to, to define this. And this could be done through organizing uh, joint working sessions among, between humanitarian and, and development actors uh, to identify these specific objectives and priorities um, and to do some specific planning exercise as well of what next, uh, what could happen within the next 12 months or the next uh, 24 months. And also to facilitate the development of eyeline uh, action plan. Then this also required a space where humanitarian and development actors can work together uh, for nutrition. Uh, there is a lot of uh, coordination mechanism already existing and meetings, uh, but um, uh, a bit of a lack of space for humanitarian and development actors to work together. So it's not, this recommendation is not about creating new coordination mechanism or meetings, but just to make sure that in some of these meetings and mechanisms, both humanitarian and development actors are invited. Uh, and then also related to one of the findings to support advocacy to mobilize additional resources to ensure that all uh, the, the actors uh, could contribute to these uh, processes. And also to promote intersectoral uh, coordination also as a way to bridge this gap between the different actors and between humanitarian and, and development actors. Um, then also what the case study identified is um, two main opportunities for humanitarian and development actors to work together. One is on supporting the implementation of the multi-sectoral plan of action for nutrition. Uh, they have been developed in the three countries. However, they are not yet implemented uh, at scale. And there is really an opportunity for the humanitarian actors and the local actors to really contribute to the implementation of this multi-sectoral plan by sharing the evidence uh, and the knowledge that they, they gather through their program um, to also disseminate 
the loss and learn and the tools on preparedness and early response, which is really the second area of really opportunity uh, for the col stronger collaboration between humanitarian and development actors. Uh, it's really on making uh, national programs more shock responsive uh, and, um, and, uh, and more involved into disaster preparedness because these three countries are really disaster uh, prone. And then to jointly advocate for greater alignment of the development and humanitarian fundings, I was saying that there is an increasing flexibility uh, of the of the funding. However, more more could be done. And then finally, also really to work together to identify priorities. There is not enough, as I was mentioning, there is not enough investment in nutrition. So there is a need for prioritization, and definitely both. Uh, humanitarian development actors could work together on uh, on this. And then finally, as I was mentioning, it's really about strengthening the inclusion, getting all actors working together. And for this, also what came out of the consultation is that people would lack more accountability uh, on the result to really ascertain uh, their participation. So it could be done through demonstrating uh, respect and understanding of the humanitarian principle from, from one end, but also of uh, specificities of the development programs on the other end to get a better understanding of each other um, principles and way of working. Uh, and then in terms of accountability, it's really about uh, making sure that the commitment to have annual budget tracking and reporting uh, on the multi-sectoral plan of action, on the different commitments which are made by the actors are uh, already implemented. So I would like now to make this much more concrete and practical to invite, do to invite Dr. Sham and uh, Craig Karima Alada to uh, share their experience. So Mrs. Karima Alada is working in the Ministry of Planning and International uh, Cooperation in Yemen and is the Sun Technical Focal Point for Yemen. And Dr. Sham is a coordinator of the Technical Secretariat of the Afghanistan Food Security and Nutrition Agenda since 2017 and is the Sun uh, Technical Focal Point for Afghanistan. So Dr. Sham and, and Karima, thank you very much for joining us today. I'm sorry, Dr. Sham, you had a bit of connection issue, but uh, I understand that now you are with us. Could you confirm you are with us, Dr. Sham? Yes. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. And I think Karima is there as well. I spoke with her a bit earlier. Yes, I'm there. Yeah. Hi, hi everybody. Thank you. So to start with, Dr. Shams, could you kindly tell us uh, in a few words what the Nexus is allowing you to achieve in Afghanistan? What is the added value of the Nexus for Nutrition in Afghanistan? You are muted, Dr. Sham, we cannot hear you. Hello, do you hear me now? Yes, we do. Okay, okay, good. So thank you very much uh, for everyone who is attending this uh, webinar. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, the Global Nutrition Cluster, the Sun Global Secretariat uh, for um, choosing Afghanistan as a country study site for uh, humanitarian development nexus. And of course, my, my, my heartfelt appreciation goes to Catherine who has helped us to conduct this uh, study. Uh, for me or for us, uh, on behalf of the Afghanistan Food Security and Nutrition Agenda, what humanitarian development nexus means, for sure it means a lot for us. It means duty for us, it means practice, it means coordination, it means opportunity to be uh, availed and, 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 and used. Uh, uh, Allow me to tell you that Afghanistan is unfortunately a, a protracted humanitarian context. We, have, uh, we are a fragile country, we have a lot of humanitarian issues, 
and we have issues related to the food security and nutrition in Afghanistan. We have uh, uh, areas that we have problem with the coverage of the nutrition services. We have issues with the quality of the nutrition services provided throughout the health facility or at the community level. We have issues related to the financing the nutrition services or gaps actually, financial gaps. So all this mean to us a lot. In Afghanistan, uh, for many years, uh, I think at least for the last 20 years, we had this uh, development and humanitarian activities going together. Uh, we are very luckily that, lucky that we have the cluster approach here in Afghanistan and we have a very strong active nutrition cluster here in Afghanistan, but at the same time, uh, we have development partners uh, or the helping us and of course the, the ministries, the, the institutions here in Afghanistan, they have their development agenda and nutrition is part of both humanitarian and, and development. So uh, uh, I don't know Catherine, shall I continue with my thoughts on or uh, shall I stop here? Let's hear maybe from Karima as well if she can give us a kind of big picture for, for Yemen, and then after we'll be entering in more detail. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Um, you know, the humanitarian development nexus in Yemen, uh, it was introduced for the first time in 2016 by the development, the development partners. Uh, and it was the first realization of the challenge that Yemen is facing a long-term protracted uh, political and development crisis. And um, during this, they have set this, uh, the uh, Yemen's new way of working, and they set the collective outcomes uh, that uh, goes around strengthening the humanitarian um, response, and also to uh, the institutional preser preservation and service delivery, and also the economic development recovery. Uh, in 2018, the humanitarian development nexus was brought into Sun Yemen picture for the first time by colleagues uh, in Sun Movement Secretariat during the updating of the multi-sectoral plan. At that time, it was the first time that we, we were asked to brought this into the, the work of Sun. So during the, um, the, the update of the multi-sectoral plan uh, and uh, with the team from the MQ Sun, we have planned all the activities uh, that's going on in Yemen. I mean, from the humanitarian um, perspective and also from the development partners. And uh, I think um, the, the, the main achievement during this uh, work was the, uh, the development of the multi-sectoral plan uh, as a complementary plan for the humanitarian, which is the um, the humanitarian development, uh, uh, sorry, the humanitarian response plan, um, you know, headed by OCHA and the clusters into the country. So this is the the big picture for the humanitarian development nexus. And uh, it is a very important opportunity to the stakeholders and partners in Yemen to stand up to the affected community's expectations and to uh, the people's need for not only the humanitarian assistance, but also they look forward to the sustainable interventions w um, within the developmental uh, framework. Thank you. Thank you, Karima and, uh, and Dr. Sham. And um, Dr. Sham, you were mentioning uh, so the multi-sectoral plan for nutrition in Afghanistan and also the issues around coverage, quality, funding of the nutrition uh, intervention. And I think this question is also valid, valid for Karima. Could you give us a bit more details on uh, how do you see the humanitarian development nexus contributing to um, solve this issue or to improve this aspect uh, in terms of the nutrition services and the uh, uh, fight in general against uh, malnutrition? Um, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Yes, why not? Uh, the, you know, in, in Afghanistan, we, uh, the nutrition services are provided through uh, mainly through basic package of the health services and essential package of hospital services when it comes to the public sector. 
It's also provided to the private uh, health sector. But uh, unfortunately, uh, in areas where we have an uh, ongoing fight, uh, we have areas that we call it white areas, or those areas that can have difficulties accessing health and nutrition services. So the coverage is also affected uh, by an availability of nutrition-related services. So what is actually happening in the humanitarian uh, development con in humanitarian context, uh, particularly in when it comes to nutrition health, the the, the humanitarian uh, partners or actually the, the HRP and uh, these uh, donors, they are helping us to cover those areas. So with additional funding, additional financial resources, but at the same time, making, uh, ensuring that uh, uh, staff is available, their equipment and services are provided. So one aspect is that uh, humanitarian and development nexus will help us to augment on the financial resources but also to reach those areas where the fixed or the static health services cannot reach. So that, that is in terms of coverage. But I think on the global level and the policy level, I, I, I would like to tell you that we have still issues with the coordination. Uh, I'm telling you both structures are present in Afghanistan, both development and humanitarian, but how they really actually talk to each other, they how really uh, ensure the synergy for the for the nutrition in Afghanistan, I think that is lacking a bit. And, and for many years, the approach was a little bit vertical approach. Everyone was busy in their own sphere, and as Steve was also referring to it, the silo approach. I see the humanitarian and development nexus as an approach that bring all these partners together around one table, and then ensure that everything is. Uh, implemented uh, in, uh, in a very right way. Uh, and I think this is why this was very uh, important to us because we have, a, I, I told you, we have the nutrition cluster, we have health cluster, and we have also other clusters in Afghanistan. But under the FCN agenda, we are trying them to bring them. And I think the idea is that we slowly, slowly uh, somehow uh, reduce this uh, demarcation by I am the humanitarian and you are development, because at the end, the agenda is the human being. We, are, we have to serve people, we have to serve uh, children. And of course, everyone has different uh, type of expertise uh, in, the, uh, in the field, but I think that that should not be the objective. The objective should be the big objective that to serve the, the health. So th that, is, that, is, that is really important in terms of planning because uh, uh, usually the, the, the partners, they develop their own plan without considering the context. So if we really want to have a very holistic uh, planning and implementation, then we should have the information from the context and what is happening. And I think humanitarian development nexus will help each, uh, all these partners, humanitarian development partners to understand each other, the, the sharing of information, evidences, uh, exchange of experiences also. And one thing uh, that I would like also to add that in Afghanistan, sometimes there is no mm, clear uh, separation of who is humanitarian and who is development partner. Some of, sometimes partners are doing the same thing. For example, we have in, in the UN system and we have even among NGOs, both uh, international NGOs and local NGOs organizations that they uh, do both. They do humanitarian, they, they are uh, active in humanitarian response, but they also of our development, they have a development initiatives. And I think from there we should start. Sometimes the, the floor, the first floor and the second floor don't talk. I think we start from the internal sort of coordination and communication, improve the communication, and then go a bit uh, on, on, on the policy level and the dialogue level. I think the seen agenda is the right platform to ensure that that policy dialogue between humanitarian and development partners are happening. And this is the area that I think what will help our planning and execution. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sham. I would like to ask the same question to, to you, Karima. Um, could you kind of give some, some examples on how the humanitarian development techniques can help you to overcome the challenges that you're meeting in, uh, uh, in, in Yemen uh, on, uh, on nutrition? Are you still there, Karima? Uh oh, 
I think we had some connection issue. Yeah. Okay. It seems that Karima has lost the, the the connection. She was not, unfortunately, not able to be in our office. So maybe we can continue with uh, with Dr. Sham. Uh, and hoping that Karima will be able to to join us back again. I don't know if Steve, you can you can check on this. Um, so, Dr. Sham, maybe to continue on what you were mentioning regarding improving the the coordination and the the collaboration. Um, what are the lessons uh, you learn uh, in the past uh, month and years uh, working in the in the Afsen, uh, agenda? on what are the kind of main challenges, but also opportunity to strengthen this, uh, this collaboration. And then what, what is coming next in Afghanistan for you? What are you planning to do in the coming month uh, to move this agenda forward? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I think uh, the lessons that we have uh, from the I've seen agenda on the coordination part, first of all, it's a very nice word. Everyone is talking about coordination and collaboration, but when it comes to practice, it has unfortunately lots of challenges. Uh, I think uh, coordination is very important uh, for the information sharing, for showing your commitment. It's really important for uh, many, many things, starting from the planning, implementation, knowledge management, your political and technical commitment, everything. But sometimes, to be honest, it's written very well in papers, but when it comes to practice, you will see some good examples of, for example, of the, if you look and analyze the attendance rate of members attending the, 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 the meetings. If you go and a little bit go deeper and see the quality aspects of the meeting, so I think uh, there are issues with that, how like people are active and technically sound um, contributing to discussions and they really bring their experience and, and, and knowledge on the table. But I think there are lots of opportunities as well because uh, the good thing is nowadays in Afghanistan that among, uh, I mean, at the government level, but also at the UN donors and NGO level, people really, understood the importance of coordination and communication. The, I think we are gradually going towards a direction that we will acknowledge and confirm that silo does not work. And if you want to achieve our social and development objectives, we have to work together. I think that is the direction. The opportunity is that, that we have uh, structures in place and, though, and these structures actually have the political support uh, from the government of Afghanistan and, the, for example, the Afghanistan Food Security and Nutrition Agenda is the government-led agenda. It's not, it's not an NGO, it's not a UN, it's a government-led and supported agenda. If you look at the cluster uh, structure that we have, there is a very solid uh, cl uh, cluster uh, system or structure system of humanitarian architecture exists in Afghanistan and I think that helps us. So, Coordination and communication around structures or within the structures will help us a lot. The, the another opportunity is that today's, I think the trend of the entire development assistance to Afghanistan uh, is also somehow pushing us, but also encouraging us. Maybe this is an incentive that we have to really bring everyone on board. And I think if you see it from the angle of the, or from the side of transparency or good governance, I think uh, that is really important because we all have the right to know what is happening and every stakeholder should be consulted and their opinion and, and, and views to be taken into the account. Uh, particularly the, the, recent, the, 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 the recent Geneva conference in Afghanistan and the conventionalities that they have, uh, the, the, the donor or the development communities put on. I think they, they, are, they, they are, for example, they're talking about corruption, but I think if you just go deeper, one way to improve the governance of the nutrition related intervention, it's, uh, it's the coordination. You have to put all you, I mean, you have to talk to the people what type of resources you have, what type of technical resources do you have, what funding do you have, and how you can really put that on the table, information sharing your reports. I think these are the opportunities for us. The plan, you, you just mentioned about the plan, uh, 
first of all, the, the big plan is that um, I would like to uh, share it, that we do not know, is, I, I told this theory and practice for us, but very few people in Afghanistan really understand uh, what is the, 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 the humanitarian development nexus means. So I think we need uh, uh, a little bit explain this to the people. The, the first uh, and the important step forward is that we are now working with the president office uh, and we would like to, in, uh, to get the endorsement of the new multisectoral approach, a little bit revised version of the multisectoral approach uh, for the Afghanistan food security and nutrition agenda. We are the humanitarian development nexus has a very key and crucial uh, role in that structure. So that structure is not inviting everyone, particularly the humanitarian. And so the focus is on humanitarian development nexus. The, the second um, uh, plan is that we really want to improve the meaningful um, membership of the participation in our, in our platforms. Uh, we are working on the term of references, but we are also discussing internally and we will a little bit expand this, these discussions, who should be part of these structures, these uh, coordination platforms. It's not about numbers, it's not about quantity, we are really looking into the quality. So that who should be which expert and how they should really contribute to the discussions. We're also working on the, we're planning to uh, have a meeting, strategic level meeting between the nutrition cluster and Afghanistan food security nutrition agenda and really unpack uh, the, the findings of your studies, the, the, the Afghanistan case studies, really go deeper into these recommendations and see what we can really actually uh, do for these recommendations. And then we really plan practical, measurable things. And I think the last thing, which, is, uh, which will take a little bit of time uh, after we understand the humanitarian development, we also in Afghanistan talk peace new nexus, we call it triple nexus. I think what we need here also to, uh, to map what is happening in Afghanistan. And, and, and then measure this, measure this, how these actions or interventions are actually helping to improve the nutrition status in Afghanistan. But at the, I mean, maybe in one year or two years, in three years, how the resources are allocated. We have to analyze and map the resources. We have to also map and analyze the, the extent and the coverage of the nutrition related services and, and see the impact of this on our overall uh, nutrition related goals, which is reducing stunting, reducing wasting, improving anemia, and those type of nutrition indicators that we have. Uh, thank you, Catherine. I will stop here and I will welcome any questions if there are. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Sham. So if there is any question, I don't see question in the chat box, but maybe uh, some of you would like to raise their hands and to ask a question to Dr. Shams or to Steve and, uh, and Anna. Hello, I'm here. Karim, I'm back. Ah. Karima, you are back. Sorry for the connection uh, yeah. issue. Yes. Okay. Maybe before we take questions, and Karima, uh, if you could, uh, in, a, uh, in a few minutes, uh, try to add to what Dr. Sham was saying on how really the, the Nexus could make a difference and help in uh, overcoming challenges in the case of, uh, of Yemen. Yeah. For us, for Yemen, it is you know, the humanitarian development nexus, and we can say the tribal nexus, which is humanitarian development and peace nexus is very important. Um, having long and short terms, humanitarian and development, uh, national plans with collective outcomes, all this uh, brings all the stakeholders um, from all the, you know, humanitarian and development uh, uh, parties together um, to work together actually with the common understanding uh, for the operational and the challenges on the ground. So this is very important um, and a biggest step actually to have a common uh, result framework uh, whether it is a humanitarian during the, uh, the humanitarian uh, plan or uh, whether it's uh, development by the CRF of the multi-sectoral plan. Having these uh, common results are, are very important uh, to, you know, uh, translate the uh, policies into actions on ground. Also, um, you know, the, uh, one of the most important that the humanitarian development nexus brings into Yemen uh, is that Sun Multi-Stakeholder Platform is there and the clusters also 
are there so they can be a joint forum led by, um, or we can say, co-lead by the government and the partners for better coordination and leadership. Uh, you know, um, from our perspective here in Yemen, we have learned a lot during the, uh, the first phase, we can say, from the uh, humanitarian development nexus in Yemen. It is the coordination and leadership uh, challenges that we have been facing all the time and I think right now we have a, a big step forward that we reach to this kind of um, uh, common ground that we all will and and this one this you know webinar uh, is a step also an opportunity to bring the uh, all the, you know the absentees um, into the picture uh, so um, it is a key for the success and translating these strategies and theoretical um, policies into actions. Um, also, the availability of resources uh, is really a must. I mean, uh, whether they are humanitarian capabilities, financial or information, it is very important to have these resources um, available for the stakeholders. Um, the enabling environment, whether it's uh, operational, um, regulatory and legislative, uh, sharing common um, understanding and uh, ground for the stakeholders, all these are opportunities and uh, challenges at the same time. But it is important that we have reached to this stage where we can have one platform that joins the humanitarian and the development actors into one on one discussion table and we have the crf uh, that can translate the priorities of the country how we can fundraise fund you know it's like to mobilize the resources uh, at all levels uh, from the humanitarian the financial the information resources to implement these uh, activities so um, I think the most important in the coming days is the establishment of a, a platform uh, that serves as a formal mechanism to ensure coordination and co-leadership between the humanitarian and development um, partners and stakeholders in Yemen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karima. We have a question which is very much related to what you were just mentioning and also to what Dr. Shams was saying. A question for Bangladesh about how to make humanitarian and uh, development uh, actors sitting together and what, working together, especially in terms of, uh, of disaster uh, response. I don't know if you have some specific uh, uh, response to this advice, maybe Dr. Shams and, and Karima, based on your experience of uh, uh, how to, 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 to make them sit together. Can I start? Yes, please, Karima. Yeah, I think in, um, in a country with the crisis and humanitarian, um, you know, um, crisis, we can say that the initiatives when it comes from the UN um, uh, it, it will be stronger. I mean, we can form something like a steering committee for the humanitarian development nexus, and the steering committee is uh, representing uh, the, um, the humanitarian, uh, we can say the leadership from the UN, the leadership from the donors, and the leadership from the government, so having a steering committee at the first place is very important that can coordinate all the work on ground in the country um, in subject. And also the second thing is that the, the capacity building and understanding. I mean, this steering committee can provide at the first, as a first step, um, the capacity building uh, to the line ministries, we can say, the NGOs, and the partners like the business uh, sector, how can they all bring their expertise into the humanitarian development nexus? So I think these two um, are priorities. I mean, there are other actions, but these are the, the first actions. One is forming a formal mechanism or a steering committee uh, that brings the leadership from all the sides, then how to uh, have a capacity building for the in-country stakeholders from all sectors, 
because it is a multi-sector, uh, as you know. So I think this is very important, and um, I hope uh, this answers the question. Yeah. Uh, if I add, uh, uh, Catherine, I think uh, context, although we all uh, talking about fragile and humanitarian context, but still we have uh, our own uh, characteristics and, and, and peculiarities and challenges. But for me, coordination is not an outcome itself. Coordination is a process. And it's one element of the big chain of the process. I think if you want to reach the level of good coordination, I think the first step would be, would be the knowing each other. Partners should know each other. The second step is to communicate. And I think that is really important that people, the partners, the, the actors, they really communicate productively and efficiently. And then they can enter the phase of coordination. And that, of course, that is a big, uh, big world itself. And then I think you go slowly to, to towards the integration and, 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 and harmonization. The, 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 uh, for coordination in, in countries like Afghanistan, and maybe if uh, Karima also agrees with me, like Yemen or other countries, and I fully agree what uh, she just said, we really need structures for coordination. Coordination cannot happen in the ear. You need solid uh, structures who have, which have the capacities for coordination and communication. But at the same time, I think the trend should be that uh, the, 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 the government to be strengthened, the government institutions to be strengthened, that they play the, the coordination role. Because at the end, if you talk about the governance, if you talk about the ownership, if you talk about the leadership role of the government, I think coordination also fits in, in that role and, and they should play that role. But uh, in, in the humanitarian context, in context like Afghanistan, where you have emergencies and the government actually does not have time, but also sometimes resources, but also a little bit of capacity challenge, uh, government cannot coordinate everything. So I think the cluster approach uh, is very helpful, but uh, because, under, because the cluster approach in Afghanistan and many other countries are also somehow managed by the UN system. And I think that a little bit of lords the government from coordination activities. But at the end, I think uh, this should not be the idea or the target that we should move on with those type of parallel coordination structures. I think, OK, for sometimes you need them because of the resources, because of the system, because of the rapid response, which is needed in the humanitarian context, because uh, you need uh, swift actions which is possibly not possible, <laughs> unfortunately not possible in the government bureaucratic system. But I think that the, the, the trend should be that at the end we have uh, one strong uh, coordination mechanism and structure which should entail both humanitarian and development uh, type of actions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shams. Uh, I see that the time is, uh, is running. Maybe uh, just to complement this, uh, there, is a, uh, there is another question, which is how the Sun and uh, I guess also the GNC uh, could help. I don't know if uh, Steve or uh, Anna or I think Stefano also is online, if you would like to, uh, uh, to, to, to take the, the floor and also as a conclusion to this meeting. Yes, if I may quite, uh, very quickly, please do, um, as you will see in the slide at the end, you will have contact details at Sun and GNC. So for any questions of that nature, please do send them to us and we'll try and get back to you. In short, about the challenge of different ministries, whether it's disaster preparedness ministries, health ministries, talking together, um, that is in essence what Sun has been trying to do for the past 10 years with uh, a government appointed nutrition focal point who is supposed to be able to convene all the various ministries, all the various stakeholders, all the various sectors that impact nutrition to get together and to align programs. Um, and, and there definitely is a focal point in, uh, in Bangladesh. So please do write to me and, and we, will, we will put you in touch with the right people. Thank you. Just to conclude, so I was mentioning 
uh, that there is a policy brief which has been uh, just recently published and is going to be on the on the on the website as well as the recording of this particular session. So just to conclude, what uh, we would like to ask you, uh, you participants, uh, and I thank again uh, Dr. Sham and, and Karima for their input, their, their very valuable input and all the support they provided also to the, to the case study. So what we would like to, uh, to ask you is to look at this policy brief and uh, organize meetings in your own country uh, among the coordinator and the focal point, but also you can involve more people, uh, the SAG and the representative of the Sun Movement in your country, and look at this policy brief, its recommendation, and see uh, what um, you could implement uh, in your country, what, it, what the added value also, uh, the, the nexus and uh, these specific activities could bring in your country. Reflect on this and then contact the GNC and the Sun Movement Secretariat. On the screen, you have uh, the email of uh, Brioni in the GNC and Steve uh, in the Sun Secretariat and contact them uh, with your plan and uh, to, to, to look and also with some specific requests. Uh, for assistance if you think that you need uh, additional uh, assistance to be able to uh, continue the work that you may have started in your country or start this work on the on the nexus. I don't know if at this stage there is any burning question that we could that we could answer. If not I would just like to finish this webinar by thanking you all for participating. It is just a starting point uh, in the process of, uh, of building this next. Steve, you want to say a last word? Yeah, I just wanted to say a few last words. And we all know that, and I think they came across very well with what Dr. Champs and, and, and Karima were saying, is that we all know that the theory of the multi-sector and multi-stakeholder approach to nutrition is relatively simple as is the basic concept of the nexus. But in reality, as Dr. Shams pointed out, um, it is extremely complicated, challenging, and time-consuming. I think if, if ever the saying, there is no one size fits all, it's for the nexus. Every country context will require such a unique approach with different challenges and different opportunities. Um, for instance, I didn't mention the peace element uh, of a so-called triple nexus. But that was not because of a perceived lack of importance, but because the idea was not to draft an exhaustive list of all the sectors and stakeholders that need to contribute to fight against malnutrition, because they're infinite. Um, and the relative importance will be different in every country and indeed every community and every household. Um, I also wanted to say that we are obviously all already engaged in the nexus in some form or another. And even just participating in this webinar is, is, is maybe a first step for some. Um, and again, just to re-emphasize, as, uh, as I said in the beginning, as Anna said, as Catherine just said, the GNC and some stand ready to support you to make the most of the nexus. So please let us know how we think, how you think we can assist, and we'll make sure that we do whatever we need to try and make sure that we do assist or find people that, that can. Um, I wish you good luck and thank you very much for participating. Anna, you want to say a last word? Oh, um, no, thank you. I'm very cautious of time, so I, I'd rather let people go to work. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much to all of you, and a special thanks to, to Dr. Shams and, and Karima for their, uh, for their insight, very useful insight. Um, and so we will be sharing additional information in the, in the coming days. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Shams. Well spoken. Thank you. Thank you very much.